Let's talk about routers or routers if you are in the US of A. It's been a long journey for me and I have experienced some very many ups and downs along this little path. It all started probably around four or five years ago now when AC was first coming onto the market. A little bit like AD is starting to come onto the market right now. But let's roll back just a touch. So we're all using wireless N and along came this amazing wireless AC, which even now isn't in every single home in my area. I'm still the only person using AC. So I rushed to the shops and purchased a Linksys EA6500, which had a draft AC technology as you can see here 4.3 times faster than wireless n and at that time it was not something a project that i was going to play with it was simply to sit on a desk and work and it kind of did there was one weird problem that i had with it that plagued me since day one if your phone was connected to one of the ac points would work fine speeds would be very good if you then moved to a different room into the house the connection would drop and then come back again if your phone auto switched it would come back again but if your phone decided not to go back from 4g onto the network it would simply never return to the wi-fi and that was always a problem. I just couldn't be bothered to ever try and find out what the issue was. I tried updating the firmware, never, never worked. So I simply went back and connected anything that moves around the house, like phones and laptops to N, which was fine on the 2.4. And anything that was static, like smart televisions, Chromecast and streaming services, to the AC and that worked just fine until I moved studio. When I moved studio it's on two levels and because of that this was sending absolutely no signal downstairs and because it was about five years old anyway I decided time had come to invest in some new technology. So what has changed technology wise during that time? Well not as much as you may think actually wireless ad is coming onto the market but that's only really good for same room situations certainly wouldn't help in my environment where i needed to stretch it across two floors didn't really know what to buy hadn't done much research but i knew i'd always had links this stuff so i decided to buy another linksys and i kind of wanted to look into open source as well DDWRT, OpenWRT, LEAD, L-E-D-E. Decided on this. Still links this product and it's kind of a throwback to the old era. Beautifully built. Absolutely solid build. And I really thought that this was going to just sort of send a Wi-Fi signal throughout the house and be the be all and end all well this technology that this has is a thing called tri stream 160 and i guess the theory behind that is 80 and 80 together to combine the 160 so that you can stream 160 megahertz this also has dfs channels which operate in the same kind of frequency as a weather radar so you need to be a little bit careful with it let's have a look so this explains here the tri stream 160 versus your normal ac sounds great right it means that everything is going to run so much faster certainly if you view the advertising like you see here that's what it's showing there's a problem at this moment nothing actually supports 160 
very few things do. I mean, the only thing you could really do is to buy two of these, have one upstairs, one downstairs, and link them wirelessly using this 160 technology. But I had the ability to run a cable between upstairs and downstairs. And a cable was always going to be quicker, so that wasn't really much help for me. You have this next generation multi-user technology, which the Samsung S8 does support, but it would only really help if you've got two Samsung S8s. Otherwise, there's not much point in that either. So exactly what do we have here for our five years difference between the two links? Well, this is a 1750 and this is a 1900, but there's you know not much difference there. So really and truly, you're not gaining an awful lot at this moment. You're future proofing yourself as far as you possibly can, but again, this doesn't even have AD, so you're not future proofing yourself that far. But there is one thing that this does very well. It's fully open source supported, or at least that's what they'd like you to believe. So I dived in, I slapped on DDWRT and the Wi-Fi was horrible. Doing a transfer between a QNAP NAS and a Samsung S8 on DDWRT was giving me around 25 meg down. On stock software it was giving me 32 meg down. It looks as though the DDWRT doesn't obviously have the commercial drivers available. My QNAP is EXT4, so it shouldn't be a problem with NTFS. Was not impressed with the DDWRT. Sorry for all you fanboys out there. It was slow. So I tried OpenWRT, or at least I tried to try OpenWRT, only to find that it is basically LEDE lead. I downloaded a special build of that and it was better. My speeds were the same as stock, around 32 down from a QNAP NAS. And I find that the, uh, the Wi-Fi was working better as well. So I pretty much sort of happy and I decided all I needed to do would be to run a cable through the walls, downstairs, buy another cheap router downstairs and use it as an access point. I went to find a cheap router, but I also wanted gigabyte ethernet ports in the back to power smart TV and the Chromecast Ultra. So that kind of limited all the really cheap options out. And the cheapest one I could find was 40 pounds and it's the Asus AC1200G. And it was just to sit next to a TV and power via AC and gigabyte ports to phones and things that were downstairs at the time. Really didn't think much more than that. It was a kind of cheap and cheerful solution. I wanted to test that my throughput was working because I run a cable all the way through the wall so I gave a quick test of a four gig file from the QNAP down past the 3200, through the cable, down the wall, into this, and then out to me on an AC stream. I was very shocked. I was punching out 37, 38 megs from this and as an AP connected via a cable from the ultra expensive 3200 that should be classed 1900. I know it's a 3200, but it's not fully supported. So at the moment it's working as a 1900. And this 1200 was giving me five, six megs down more than my ultra expensive 3200, which was four times the price. Might be an issue with lead, so I went back to the stock factory build and I was getting exactly 
the same throughput. So our machine with a dual core 1.8 processor was giving me less throughput than a 40 pound Asus. Oh dear. Clearly, that is not what you want when you're spending your money on this big boy. And I think the problem really is the fact that it uses this Marvel chipset. I am not particularly impressed with it. The more diving in I do. There's another model of this, Linksys 1900, that still isn't working quite right. And that's been around for a long time. This is relatively new. And so it could take years to try and get on the train. So I decided to ditch this one before the two week, 14 day period was up. But that left a problem of what can possibly replace it. At first, I was thinking simply of buying another one of these. But I have a lot of stuff in the house, a lot of YouTube. So I really wanted something with a bit of grunt behind it and something that I could use lead on if I wanted to or open source something that could really work well a lot of research and I decided upon this beast the Netgear R 7800 and boy this is a different game altogether it comes along to the party of the 30 200 and PPs all over it. This thing's on fire guys. This is a win right here. So the speeds were were, were up there with this one. So 37s, 38s meg down from a QNAP NAS EXT4. Wi-Fi, Jesus. I've actually had to turn the Wi-Fi transmission down slightly because it was bleeding all over the downstairs um, Asus and being more powerful than the Asus was downstairs so I've had to turn it down to 50% so that it doesn't just transmit everywhere downstairs as well where the Asus is trying to transmit so the Wi-Fi is strong as an ox. One of the biggest problems of running DDWRT or LEAD is the fact that yeah it's open source yes you can do a lot with it yes you can run open vpn servers and clients and you can have a lot more flexibility but you lose commercial grade stuff commercial grade drivers and the fact is that my qnap nas has open vpn on it anyway has all my ftp servers on it and does all the hard work for me so i really don't particularly need to run the open stuff apart from the fact that I'm a geek and it is a lot of fun but I actually stumbled across some quite interesting software if you go onto the SNB forums here you'll find this guy Voxel Voxel however you want to say it and he does this custom firmware that is actually based on the stock firmware that doesn't require you to fully destroy your router into open software making it hard to get back but it actually unleashes a few things now this netgear advertises itself as the fact that it has a 1.7 gigahertz dual core processor very nice i'll hear you say but it doesn't well it does it has a 1.7 gigs processor but it only uses 1.4 of it for whatever reason. Well, if you slap on the firmware from Vauxhall, Vauxhall, it will unleash the beast and you can run it at its full speeds. There's many other benefits that his firmware does for you. And the beauty is, if you don't like it, it's very simple to return back to standard Netgear stuff. So certainly before you do go ball in a china shop and stick lead project software on firmware have a little look 
and the SMB forums first. I am extremely happy with the Vauxhall firmware. So what do we get then with this router, which is by far better than the WRT 3200, believe me. Ultimate Wi-Fi speeds, of course you're never going to get it, but there you go, quad stream technology wave 2 does support 160 megahertz as well quad stream high performance external antennas and i can assure you that is extremely true twin usb3 and e sata ports very nice latest firmware genie remote access is actually quite cool i don't normally go in through all this junk but it is actually pretty sweet even has open VPN access on mobile devices as well and it's compatible with Amazon Echo and Alexa. Gigabyte Gigabyte wired as well, which I mean obviously now these days can go more than that, but let's face it guys, probably most of us are using Gigabyte wired at the moment. Loves to say it's a 1.7 and yes it is with the right firmware and 512 mega memory now it does say that it's got 128 mega flash but be careful because it's not entirely true because it keeps a lot of that in reserve if you do run led lead firmware on it you probably only have about 14 megs for your extra programs there are ways and means of releasing the whole beast does mean it's a bit harder to get back so if that's really what you want to do. So let's summarize this because this has been a bit of a long one. I'm not talking about enterprise offices here and workspaces and things. Let's just keep it nice and simple. Home use. If you want pretty much the best bang for your buck, you want to be buying the AC1200G because that really is a fantastic, fantastic router for the money. If you want to play around a little bit more at the moment, I would strongly suggest the R7800 from Netgear. If you want an out of the box solution for lead firmware, LEDE, this is your go to. It has very much development. I think Kong even owns one of these if you want to go for DDWRT. That also has huge development. And if you want an easy solution, you can go and grab the Vauxhall firmware as well. That's been my little rant there, guys. That's been my progress from Linksys to, as it is now, I'm afraid, to Belkin, to Asus, which was superb and outstanding value for money, does exactly what it says on the tin. And finally, the R7800 which finally got its place on my desk. This has been routingly emotional.